So I want to uh, kind of finish up the talk, probably the last 10 or 15 minutes or so, um, and hopefully we'll have some time for questions uh, as well on closed neural tube defects. Um, so going back to this initial slide that I had uh, previously talked about, closed neural tube defects uh, or closed spinal dysraphism um, really kind of boils down to, to different categories. And again, I like to think about things really simply. So when I think about a closed neural tube defect, I'm going to ask the question, okay, is there a dorsal subcutaneous mass or is there not a dorsal subcutaneous mass? So those with a dorsal subcutaneous mask include those with a lipomyelomeningocele, a lipomyelocele, terminal myelocystocele, and a meningocele. Without a dorsal subcutaneous mass, you can have what's called a lipoma, which is different than a lipomyelomeningocele, though they probably occur along a continuum. And among lipomas, there's a lipoma of the phylum terminale. There's what's called a chaotic lipoma, which is interspersed with the nerves. And there's a dorsal lipoma, there's a tight phylum terminale. Uh, disorders of the uh, notochord include a persistent terminal ventricle, a dermal sinus tract, a dorsal enteric fistula, a neuroenteric cyst, a split cord malformation. There's caudal regression syndrome and then segmental spinal dysgenesis. So when we talk, talk about occult spinal dysraphism, one term that uh, I'm going to just throw out there, and, and again, all of these uh, occult spinal dys, dys Raphism cases, they're characterized in general by an intact epithelial layer. So they are closed. So there's not an urgency to take care of these things unless there's leakage of spinal fluid or, or things like that. So spina bifida occulta, you're going to see this term seen a lot um, on radiology reports, on consult requests, and things like that. And it's a commonly seen abnormality where there's an absence of a spinous process or lamina of L5 or S1. It's an incidental finding, and there's really no action needed. When you think about closed neural tube defects, what you want to keep in your mind is there are reasons to intervene and there's reasons to observe. The reason to intervene is if there's a meningitis risk in the setting of, let's say, a dermal sinus tract where there's a punctate connection and lesion with the outside world, and if there's spinal cord tethering or concern for spinal cord tethering. Hey, everyone. Ryan Rad here from neurosurgerytraining.org. If you like that video, subscribe and donate to keep our content available for medical students across the world.